everybody. So today we're going to talk some about some more about sex and sexuality in the natal chart. We are going to talk specifically about Mars and then a little bit about Pluto. I'm not going to focus on that, but I do want to throw Pluto into the mix here because Mars is the lower octave of Pluto and Pluto is the higher octave of Mars. So they do kind of go hand in hand. But when we're talking about like Okay, let me see if I can make this make sense with the lower and the higher octaves. <clears throat> okay, so Mars is, is, and we're looking at Mars just from the lens of sex and sexuality, sex, you know, sexual drive, libido, that kind of thing. Mars is the human end of this. Okay, like as, oh, fuck. <laughs> Sorry, the wind started blowing. Um, Mars is like the, um, Mars is like the, the human end of this. The, we are spiritual beings in the physical world, having a human experience. So Mars brings that into play with, with sex and sexuality. Like it, it's the human end of it, the physical end of it. Pluto on the other end, on the other hand, on the other end, on the other hand, um, is the spiritual component. Um, sexuality is a, is a spiritual thing with, with Pluto. That's how I think of them. That's how I bring them together um, in this sense. And if you're Mars and Pluto, I would, al I would also look in your own chart and see if Mars and Pluto make an aspect. If they do, what is that aspect? If it's something like the conjunction, Mars and Pluto conjunct one another, the person might, this is not universal, but they might be able to bring together the human form of sexuality with the spiritual form. This might blend nicely together. It could. Um, if they are opposing one another, there's a need to balance because um, they're at opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, if Mars happens to be square Pluto, there might be tension with what they, what the person desires in their human, in their human form, in their body, what their body desires, <laughs> say, versus what what their body desires sexually versus what spiritually they may desire sexually. Um, I could see that playing out. Whereas if Mars and Pluto are say sextile or trine, there might be um, an ease between these two things. Um, the sextile I would think could be very, very creative, like consciously creative. Like they probably are very aware of what they need in both. And, and, in their human form and spiritually they sexually they understand what they need um versus the trine they probably they are aware of this too but um there might be a laziness about going about you know utilizing it, it there could be um and if there's like a, a king kunx or an inconjunct um what they need in their in their human form what their body needs sexually might not see what they need spiritually sexually and and you know, or vice versa. Um, they might not always be seen together. <clears throat> so I did want to bring that up because I do think it's an important thing to bring up here. But, um, but now we'll just talk about Mars <laughs> because we are, like I said, we are, we are spiritual beings, but we're in the physical world and we're having a, we're humans, we're having a human experience. So the, the, the human end of this is really more what I'm talking about. Um, by sign and house will give you an idea of, of where and what areas of, of what areas of life and how um, sex, sex drive and libido and whatever comes out. Like let's say you've got Mars in the fifth house. The person's sex drive might come out in dating. Um, <laughs> it might it might want to come out doesn't always have to depends on how the person, everything else going on in the chart, but it might, there might be a desire there to come out for the sex drive to come out. Um, sex might be a very, sexuality might be a very creative thing for them. It might be, sexuality might be what needs to be expressed, what they need to creatively express. This could be a big deal for them, depending on what ha what's happening to Mars in the chart could show if, if Mars is, if Mars has a lot of really challenging aspects to it, that could make that hard for the person to be able to sexually express themselves. If it's got a bunch of easy aspects, it might make it easy for them to do this. 
again, though, easy aspects, <laughs> maybe that's not always a good thing. You know, it's just easy for them. Mars in the, let's say you've got Mars in the eighth house. Um, Mars in the eighth house, I think of somebody who, their sex, their sexuality and their libido is probably tied in with their psychology somehow, with their own personal psychology. It probably is. Um, it's probably a pretty psychological thing to them. I would encourage people with, with Mars in the eighth house to dig in that way, to really try to figure out, figure that out for themselves. I think that's important. Um, also it could be, since I think of the eighth house as like the bridge between the conscious and the unconscious, looking at it from a, from a, from a, from a lens of sex and sexuality, you might be dealing with somebody who, um, they might not be totally sure about, about their sex drive. They might not be totally conscious to it. Um, that always seems like it could play in. So another reason why it's good for them, for Mars in the eighth house to, to do some digging, um, to do some digging to, to figure that out. Um, let's say you have Mars in, I'll do signs. Let's say you had Mars in, I don't know, um, we'll say Aries. <clears throat> Mars is, is domicile in Aries. Um, so it's happy there. Maybe, um, you know, Mars, and I think of somebody who's pretty sexually independent or needs sexual independence. Sexuality needs to be, you know, expressed in an independent way, um, in an impulsive way even, or in an instinctual way. Um, in a in a driven way, there could also be like a, Mars is also like conquest. So <laughs> um, there could be like a, sexuality could be like, there could be something that like wanting to have conquest. <laughs> I, I could, sexual conquest, I could see that being the case. That is not universal though. So don't, you know, but I could see that being the case. And then you have Mars, let's say you've got Mars and Scorpio because Mars is the, Mars is the, is the traditional ruler of Scorpio. Now, Pluto is the modern ruler, but Mars is the traditional ruler of Scorpio. So uh, Mars is also happy in Scorpio. The difference though is when I think of Mars and Aries, again, I think of the more human side, looking at it from the lens of sex, in, blah, 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 sex and sexuality, I think of Mars and Aries as a more human, a more human expression of this a more physical expression of this, whereas Mars and Scorpio feels like more of a spiritual expression of this. Uh, there's still, it's still happy there, but there is more of a spiritual bent or it feels that way to me since Pluto is the higher octave of Mars and Pluto is the modern ruler of Scorpio. It does feel like that that does happen um, or that could happen. <clears throat> Again, that while Mars is happy in Scorpio, it also depends on what all is going on in the chart because there could be something wonky going on that's throwing Mars off. Um, then there's say um, we'll do Mars is a uh, Mars is in detriment in Libra. Detriment. Um, so Mars isn't quite as happy in Libra. I would think if we're looking at it from the the lens of sex and sexuality it's very important that this person's libido is balanced <laughs> or this person's um, sexuality is balanced, like that they're able to find a balance with that because Libra is always wanting to balance it. It's always balancing the seesaw. So that can throw it off balance if it overbalances. Um, so yeah, Mars and Libra makes me think sexual balance is, is incredibly important um, to find. Um, then you'd also want to look at any aspects that Mars makes in the chart. Like, um, I was talking about Mars and Pluto. I think I forgot the conjunction though. If Mars is conjunct, um, I may have said this. If Mars is, <laughs> I can't remember. If Mars is conjunct Pluto, there's like, I feel like there's a lot of, there's an ability for the, for the human nature and the sexual nature to come together. Uh, the, the spiritual nature of sexuality to come together. These could, these could blend nicely. They could. Um, if I already said that, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, another, something else to look at is, is Venus, Mars with Venus. <clears throat> if you've got like, say somebody with Mars conjunct Venus, 
Um, you could be looking at somebody whose sexuality and like how they love and like what they love and value and what what their libido or what their sexuality looks like, um, their sex drive. These might blend nicely together. They might come together nicely. If you've got somebody that say has Mars square Venus, there might be some tension between these things, their libido and the way that they what, what they love and value, there there might be some, some tension between these that needs to be worked out. Um, Mars, Mars opposite Venus, these things are at opposite ends of the spectrum. They need to be balanced. Um, yeah, but I, I would definitely look at Venus too, um, just because it's another end of, end of things here. Um, and sometimes I, I want to mention this too. This isn't just a masculine thing. Like, yes, Mars is very masculine energy. It is masculine energy, but the sexuality that Mars that Mars expresses, that Mars wants to express, is is sexual drive. And regardless if you're male or female or anything, or identify as anything in between, um, we all have Mars. We all have have sexual desire. We all have a libido. Um, so I would definitely, regardless of how you identify, I would I would look at Mars for this specific thing. I I definitely would. I've seen some things online where it's like if if you're a woman you shouldn't look at this, or if you identify as a woman you shouldn't look at Mars for this. I don't agree with that. Luckily I don't see that too often because I don't agree with it. I think you should look at it regardless, because <laughs> um, it'll it'll give you an idea as to how your um, how your sexuality functions. Anyway, I'm going to get going. If you want to follow us on Instagram, you can find us at Let's Fuck With Astrology. I'm at Saturn Season Astrology on Instagram. Natalie is at Abiturno Astrology on Instagram. If you want to like or subscribe or whatever the fuck people do with videos on YouTube, you can find us by searching for Let's Fuck With Astrology in the YouTube search bar. Um, if you're already watching this right now on YouTube, you can subscribe if you have not and like if you want to, like eh, down below. <laughs> um, if you do the Reddit thing, come join us on the subreddit Let's Fuck With Astrology. And if you're interested in the star cards, go to letsfuckwithastrology.com slash star dash cards. Okay, y'all. I'll see y'all later.